Where's the um, zoom? Oh, I got it. I did.
have the ashes, um, you can do that. If you prefer, just keep it in the packet and um, carry it in your pocket or your purse and carry the forgiveness of Christ with you. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing that with us. Uh, uh, 2020 and 2021, it seems as though we're having to really use creative thinking, and we are most appreciative to Michelle as music and worship chairperson of finding another way for us to be able to receive the ashes in this pandemic time. Also, on February the 23rd, which is uh, Tuesday, uh, a Tuesday a week, we will be beginning the Bible study. Those um, uh, books are in the back narthex area if you're interested in joining us. If you at uh, home uh, that are watching us on uh, video, if you would like to know of the title of the book and, uh, and possibly get a copy of the book, please let our, our office know. Uh, also, the council meeting, which was scheduled last week, was postponed because of the snow and ice. And it, the new date is Wednesday, February the 24th at 7 p.m. Uh, we are glad that you are here. Um, and we give a special greeting to all of those who are joining our uh, uh, worship service and all of those who have come to our service today at 11 a.m. And certainly uh, it's wonderful that in less than 24 hours, you can all come and worship in our sanctuary uh, when it, uh, we had to uh, postpone uh, and, and record today because of the ice anticipated tomorrow. It is a joy to share this experience with you wherever you may be tuning in, and we would love to hear from you. Any comments, questions on the sermon, prayer requests, you can always uh, email the pastor at trinitycadencevillepastor at gmail.com or certainly call the church office. So this is the day. May we um, uh, pass the peace and signs of greeting to one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And can we all do the people one line? The peace of Christ be with you. And their responses as, and also with you. With you. Absolutely. This is the day.
a love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better?
join me in the call to worship. We have heard you call, gracious God, and gather here and are joined by others wherever they are to respond. It is your Son, Jesus, who asks that we love one another, even as he has loved us. This calling is much needed, but comes as a high challenge. Your loving kindness, O oh Lord, endures forever. He laid down his life for us. May the life and death of your love be praised forever. Inspire us this day to bring that divine love into our living. Let us enjoy together the third and fourth verses of Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. And would you join me in the, sign, in the unison prayer of confession? God is in love for all time and all people. You have called us to be those who follow your Son Jesus in lives of love. We give you our thanks that you may have given us the faith to follow and the gifts needed to serve you and our sisters and brothers. Grant 
we're going to enjoy the spirit song with Anne playing.
Susan Shiflett will be uh, having surgery this coming Saturday, and we certainly uh, do offer prayers for her for a successful surgery and, um, and, and a uh, quick rec uh, recovery period for you. Is there any other concerns that anyone would like to share? A couple concerns that have come to me in phone conversations this week. Uh, I want to give a prayer of thanks uh, for, from uh, Marilyn Gallagher. Marilyn's uh, son Frank had a heart issue that uh, had to be dealt with with a procedure on Friday. And very nervous about this because it required kind of shutting down his heart for a moment. And, but the procedure, she called yesterday and said the procedure went well. And she was just rejoicing and we rejoiced with her. I wish Frank just the best of health. And Lord be with uh, Marilyn as well. Also, let us keep uh, Gloria in our prayers. I really miss Gloria. You know, I'm Marilyn. I miss you know, all the folks that are usually here. Uh, Gloria comes to work, but not a good day for Gloria to come out today. But this coming week, she has a number of tests, uh, kidney uh, processes, and so forth. Keep Gloria in prayers for that which is before her. Others? Yeah, stand by. Pray for the healing of our country. Yeah, yeah. Tough time, hard time, division time. And we pray for the healing of our nation. Amen. And lift up folks that will help us heal. Lift up folks that will help us heal. We've heard enough of the rest. Lift up folks that will help us heal. Others? Yeah, yeah. Oh, just a um, good praise for her well being. My, uh, my parents are doing well. Good, good. They both had their first COVID shot. Good. And um, they're staying inside and they're weathering very well, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. And uh, last week I spoke about my friend Millie, yes. who is an elderly neighbor. Her spirits have been lifted. Good. Good. So she is doing very well. She was extremely thankful to get uh, the communion cup. Uh, after service last weekend. Yeah, good. I saw her last night and she's looking forward to getting uh, some ashes after Wednesday service. I'll bring her some. Um, and she's actually voiced a, 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 an interest in actually coming to service. I don't know if that's really uh, going to be the best for her because of her um, physical condition, yeah. but we will certainly entertain yeah. that. Yeah. So things yeah. are going well. Good, good. By taking those tokens, the community cup, and then passing it to her means a lot. And I heard from others who have said the same thing, where we've taken somebody else, put some cups around. It just, it was such a good connection. Just such a good connection. Say, by the way, in mentioning that, uh, we have decided that uh, we will offer communion again next week. Our hope is that the sun will actually shine next Sunday. You know, or at least it won't snow, and we'll have worship together. And we'll do good way and uh, have the service of the communion again because so many people missed the opportunity to be present for that uh, last week. Um, you mentioned Millie's spirit. It is a spiritual thing that we, uh, that we go through. I mean, so much of our attention is on the physical, and that's important for the only people to stand and be strong and breathe and so forth. The spirit sustains us. We pray for that spirit strength. Like there be others. <laughs> Every week I pray for our school kids and teachers and staff and administrators. Work this thing out somehow. <clears throat> and uh, support them all. Let's pray. Let's look to the Lord. Good, gracious, and always loving God. You who care so much for us that you send your beloved to be with us. And to love us. And in that love, Lord, we now just look to you and say, Here we are. You're struggling, helpless, but nevertheless, faithful folk wish to open our hearts to your heart in prayer. And we extend to you, Lord, first our thanks. Our thanks, Lord, to know that. Regardless of weather, regardless of situation, regardless, 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 you are always loving us. And our purpose, Lord, is just to continue to love you. To know that in that relationship, in that open channel of love, is the goodness and the whole meaning and the strength of life. And we thank you for that. We praise you for that. We praise you because through that channel flows your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that uh, 
in Millie's life, uh, spirits lifted. We thank you in other lives, uh, health and strength is given. We thank you for your, for your goodness and your blessing on Frank. And we pray you would be with uh, Susan through her procedure, with Gloria through her test, with all those who uh, walk in tough times, that you might strengthen and uphold not just their physical being, but that spirit, Lord, that carries forward, that spirit that's victorious, that spirit that walks through the dark valleys and knows that your bright light illumines them all along the way. We pray, O oh Lord, for our nation, divided and filled with hatred. But Lord, in the midst of it all, we know there are great spots of loving kindness. We know there are wonderful outpourings of loving service. And we pray that you illuminate those moments so that our attention may be on them, so that our inspiration may be from them, so that our inspiration might be from you, that your love may overcome division, and that your kindness may lead us to the path of unity. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with our systems. The systems that we feebly put together. The systems that would put a shot of vaccination in every arm, so they armed against the virus. The systems that would educate our children and our youth, that you help find ways in which that effectively can be done. And systems, Lord, that want to be functioning for the good of all. We pray, Lord, that you power them with your spirit and that you enliven them with the creativity of your wondrous love. We submit to you, Lord, our lives. And we just say to you, we want to be a part of your love. We want to bow down before you so that kneeling before you, you may actually ignite in us the divine spark so that we shall be those who are the people of your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name, praying as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. most of us. It, is, it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. 
When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. We're now going to enjoy uh, Anne uh, uh, with a, a musical selection of What Wondrous Love Is This? Up onto the 
mountain selected by Jesus so they could see something very special. I think his fear was, God's fear, God's um, uh, more than fear, God's purpose in bringing them there is that they would know something very, very particular about Jesus. Um, and it's even more that he is the Son of God. Because the word that, I'm, I'm quite sure that God chooses words very carefully, right? God is God's own script writer. Amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm reading books about people that have been script writers for folks, and it's a very interesting thing. Because you try to write what you think that person would want to say, and then you give it to them, and they say, no, that's not what I want at all. <laughs> I wish I could do that with my sermon sometimes, right? Lord, this is what I got so far. What do you think? And he would draw a big X to it and say, why don't you start over? Try again. But God writes God's own script. So what God says, and in the New Testament, there are precious few words that God says, right? I mean, think about it. So what God says on the mountain must be of prime importance. And what does God say? Huh? What's the word? The word is beloved. The word is beloved. Now that's a word that just separates God from everybody else. Nobody, well, maybe you do. You send Valentines? You send a Valentine that says, you are my beloved? Generally what I don't like. Every time you go to buy a Valentine's card, I always go to the category in the store that says, for your wife, right? And they're all confessions of guilt. They are. <laughs> they are. You read them, they'll say, I know I've not said this enough. I know I don't do this. I know I don't do that. But on this day, at least on this day, I want you to know I love you. It would be hard to find a card that says, you are my beloved. That's different, isn't it? That's different from saying, I love you. You are my beloved. What does that, what does that bring to you? You mean everything to me. You and me, we are so close. We are bonded together. You are my beloved. And that's the word that God uses uh, for Jesus. This is my beloved. We are so close. Trace out the words. Not used a whole lot. Not used a whole lot. Particularly not in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, God, uh, the psalmist uses this word uh, in reference to God's relationship with God's people. And in uh, Psalm uh, 62 and 108, 127, it talks about uh, the people are, are beloved of God. And you get this holy feeling. But of course, then you read the, the book of the Psalm, a song of uh, Solomon, which is really a love song all the way through. I mean, I had a portion of it at a wedding. And it's very rich. And there it talks about how, how his beloved, you know, his, his mate, his, his lover is beloved. It speaks of a very close, tender, and real relationship. It's a connection word that binds two people together, two entities together, Jesus and God. And now God offers this beloved to us. Yeah. Oh, it's through those three disciples, but it begins with them. And then I offer you, God says, my beloved. Also, it rings in the heart of Jesus to know that he is the beloved. In the, in the ninth verse, which we did read this morning, that's okay, I didn't intend that we would, but the ninth verse talks about them going down from the mountain, right? And when you go down from the mountain, Jesus says, don't tell anybody what you heard here today, right? Don't tell anybody. I think he says that because they're supposed to learn from that experience, and that learning hadn't started, hadn't ended yet. They had a lot, a lot yet to learn about what it is to be the beloved, what it is to know that all God's love dwells in you. 
and that you are sent to share that love with everybody else, with everybody else. As they're going down the mountain, they meet the lad that needs help, and Jesus helps him. I think Jesus is, is what would it be like to hear God say to you, you are beloved, you are my beloved, you are chosen by me, says God, to be the beloved. Well, it, 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 it ignites Jesus' life, and all he wants to do is to let everybody else know that they are beloved too, right? You're not excluded, you're not left out, you're not worthless, you're not shameless, shameful. You are beloved. How do you show somebody that they are beloved? I may have told this story before, but I was reading from this minister in New York. Treacherous walking in New York. <laughs> a lot of pedestrian accidents there because of so many cars. Until these days. And this pastor says, one day I was walking from church and I was crossing the street and a car hit me and knocked me down. And I could not get up. And I heard someone say, we'll call an ambulance. And I lay there, she said, for 20, 25 minutes waiting for the ambulance to come. What I needed, she said, was for somebody to come and kneel down with me and say, I am here. Here, I'll put my coat on you. Here, I'll look after you. Help is coming. It'll be okay. I'm with you. But no one came. Jesus, the beloved, comes to be with those who are lying in need, who are lying left out, who are lying lonely, who are lying not knowing where to go, what to do, or how to make sense of it all, to come and be with us, to be there, and to know that we are precious in God's sight. And to know that we are precious in God's sight. So the one that is healed is not just to get up and kick his heels because he can run again, but to know that he is precious in God's sight. It's a whole other dimension to life, isn't it? It's not just that now I can breathe like I'm supposed to, but I can live in a whole life because God loves me. God is with me in love. So Jesus' mission is to touch every life so that every life will know you are beloved. You are beloved. Henry Nowen. You know Henry Nowen? Ah, a, a writer of, the, of a book called The Life of the Beloved. Talks about, he, he worked in this uh, colony, in a community. Uh, for people that had uh, serious uh, mental uh, issues and, and, and uh, lived with them in order that they might discover a good way of living together and found that the way that happens most effectively is that if everyone discovers that they are beloved of God and that their life is good and is intended to be good to be shared with others, he says, just know that God, who announced Jesus as beloved, wants also to speak to each one of us to recognize. How could we love like Jesus unless we recognize ourselves as beloved of God? That God has filled us with his love because he chooses to in order that we might love. Listen to that voice with great inner attentiveness, he says. Hear that voice say, I called you by name from the very beginning. You are mine and I am yours. You are my beloved. On you, my favorites, I have molded you in the depths of the earth and knitted you together in your mother's womb. I have carved you in the palms of my hand and hidden you in the shadow of my embrace. Isn't that a great image? Live in the shadow of the embrace of God. I look at you with infinite tenderness and care. And for you, with a care more intimate than that of a mother for her child, I counted every hair on your head, guided you at every step. 
Wherever you go, I go with you. Wherever you rest, I keep watch. I give you the food that will satisfy all your hunger and drink that will quench all your thirst. I will not hide my face from you. You know me as your own, and I know you as my own. You belong to me. Nothing will ever separate us. We are one. We are one. Hear God say to us, this, you are my beloved. I choose you to be my beloved. Now the amazing thing about this, as now undermines us, is that if we know that that word comes to us from Jesus, it comes to every other person as well. And so we seek to share that belovedness with one another. That's why in the New Testament, the word beloved most frequently is used for the church, the company of the beloved. Those who not only care for themselves, but reach out and care to all others. Why? Because the second thing about Jesus being beloved is that he is sent by God. The beloved are sent in order to do the mission of love to others who need it. The mission of God's love spread by those who are sent. Now, isn't it interesting that the early Christians, the leaders of the bunch, and even today, are known as the apostles. Apostle means being sent. And the image of this is best seen when Jesus sends out that company of the 70, two by two, to go and do the ministry of love in the world. Heal the sick, get rid of spirits, and preach the gospel of peace, he says, and sh share that with everyone. We are the beloved who are sent to go into the world with the ministry of love, with the appeal of love for all others. Now one says, it's such a great way to, to see your life. What's the purpose of my life? Oh Lord, I wake up every day and wish to remind myself that you call me your beloved and so I wish to be. And to know that by that name, I am sent into the world to share your love. There is nothing else that I have to do today. If I have to go to the hardware store and buy a new furnace filter, I am there to show your love. Not my irritation that the cost of those things has gone up again. You see, I am going to have to go today to do whatever. But whatever it is, I am sent to share your love with everyone. Jesus was an everyone kind of person. I just see it again and again and again. In that fifth chapter of Matthew, read him again and again, the Sermon on the Mount, 5, 6 of, uh, of, 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 of Matthew. And Jesus talks about, I got a new way of life for you. I got a new way of life. Look, he used to say, and he's still saying, you know, those who are murdered, are guilty, of, are subject to judgment. But Jesus says, you think they're the only ones? You think that only the person that got murdered is precious? I tell you, everybody is precious. And so therefore, he says, anybody that calls another person by name of contempt, contempt, whether that person is male or female, and he always does that to make it inclusive, that person has destroyed the preciousness of that other person and is subject to judgment. And then he says, listen, then he says, the person that calls another person a fool, this happens a lot. We call other people fools, stupid, get out of it, you know, we shame them because, because we do. And it happens a lot. And Jesus said, those persons that do that are subject to hellfire. I think that's worse than judgment, eh? I mean, judgment, you might get 10 to 20. Hellfire, that really hurts. So Jesus, why, holds a severe penalty for those who go about spreading shame on people, spreading division, spreading disparity, 
spreading hatred. You fool. Awful. Awful. Because it destroys any possibility of that other person feeling beloved. The only word we can say to another person is a word that would help that other person feel beloved. And it must not stop at words because James, who talks constantly in the, the book of James in the Bible, talks constantly about how we are called by the love of God who has given us through Christ the beloved forgiveness, redemption, and access to the mystery of the will of God, which is that all people shall be brought together in unity under Christ, under love. And says, look, when you go out, don't just say to a brother that is cold, I love you, but give him a coat. Don't just say to another who is hungry, I'm sorry you're hungry, but give him something to eat. Show your faith by your deeds. Show that we are sent as the beloved, as the beloved we are sent in order to help every other person know that they are precious and beloved. I think if we are to love as Jesus, that's where it starts. Oh, and now it says, if you think about yourself as being sent by God in the same way that the disciples were sent by Jesus to go out and minister, how did their ministry end? Well, they came back to Jesus and reported how they had done what they had learned. Our life is the same, he says. We're here as the beloved sent out into the world. When our life here, our mission, our life is finished, we go back to the one who sent us and tell him what we did and how what we learned and how it was and how happy we are to be able to have known that we are the beloved sent by God. I wanted to read a whole bunch of stuff from uh, Dr. King. Uh, so Martin Luther King Jr. talks a lot about love. And the amazing thing about his ministry of love is that he was so subjected to hatred through his time. And you know the story. But what you know is that, <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever called him the beloved, but he did get the Nobel Peace Prize. He was once the guest of the King of Sweden when he went to receive that Peace Prize, you know? But then he died ministering to the garbage collectors of Memphis. Beloved, so that we can be sent out. I hope, I hope that God in this season of Lent will help us all to get a better understanding. No, no, no. To hear more clearly the voice of God. Understanding talks of the head. I think this beloved thing is a thing of the heart. That through that we might, we might hear the voice of God, might experience the voice of God just saying to us, you are my beloved. I send you out to help others hear the same call, to know the same truth. Because there's nothing, nothing, nothing better. It endures all things. And love always endures. Thanks be to God who gives us his love in the beloved who endured all things for us, even crucifixion, and then showed us that love endures all things by rising on Easter morning in the glory that God wants to give us all in the name of the Father and the Son.
Because our hope is that even in this divided and messed up world, the time will come when we'll all be standing up and singing how I love Jesus and how that love can uh, be radiated through us all. Again, our thanks to uh, Christine. Uh, we got the, uh, and our prayers to her because next week she got two services. <laughs> now we're going to do Ash Wednesday and then uh, we will have communion on the 21st. We're a worshiping folk, my friends. And uh, the reason we do that hearts connected with God so that God can help our heart connect with others in love. May the Spirit of God be the result. May His wonderful peace and joy and love be ours. And, uh, in this earth, there is the right love of Jesus. In the name of God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.